right, here is the video review for Mastermind Creations reformatted R11 Seraphicus Prominion, or their Nova Prime. Uh, much larger than the Hypernovae from Make Toys, at least here in vehicle mode. And uh, not a whole lot going on in vehicle mode. It's a good car with a trailer. It rolls and all hooks together and rolls okay. Uh, you, can, you can spin, you can get more motion out of this. You can have them turn the cab at various angles. It does, the, the kneecap joints back here do tend to get a little caught on the uh, the edges of the trailer, but um, it is possible, oh, I didn't have it plugged in. It's, it's possible without too much difficulty. Just lift it up a little bit and you can get them in a curved pose, if you wish. It does come sold separately in two sets. You can buy just the core robot and then you can buy the uh, the trailer and armor separately. Um, and the core robot is just this little guy right here. He comes packaged in robot mode and standard MMC packaging, uh, which you saw in the intro. The trailer comes in a long, skinny box. So we'll go ahead and put the trailer off to the side here for a moment. Uh, the instructions come with the core robot, and they include all the instructions for both the small robot as well as the uh, armor and trailer core. There's a quick preview of Oberon. And then the comic on the reverse side, showing Seraphicus Prominion's story. Um, the robot itself comes with uh, two glow-in-the-dark swords uh, based on the uh, Terminus Hexatron katanas. Um, they're kind of a bluish tint. They do glow in the dark. I can't really show that off very well here in my studio, or at least where I'm shooting here. But he does come with a couple of swords. They don't really fit anywhere on vehicle mode. But it's nice to have them. So we'll start off with just the robot himself. He looks like a nice, sleek sports shoe. Um, and, uh, yeah, there's that. And you can see it. There's the underside of him. Just a sleek little, little Cybertronian vehicle mode. We start off here. You want to get these untabbed. And this whole center assembly comes up on this hinge here. All right, so interruptions aside, lift this up, get this whole assembly kind of up and out of here like this. The arms, you untuck from behind this little flap down here. And you can see how the shoulders work. You want to kind of bring this out and rotate it. You can see there's a joint in here that rotates down and around here to flip his arms out. Oh, yep, that, that little post right there is starting to crack. Somebody had this little post crack. And, I, and the thing is, like, I think that little post is just kind of supposed to sit in here to help hold this in place. And the arms stay in place pretty well, so if that does crack, it's not the end of the world, but that is a little concerning there that that's uh, stressed. <clears throat> so we have this whole assembly up. Bring his head up here like that, that little head assembly up. The legs flip out, or open up the panel here, sorry. And rotate his legs down like this and flip his feet out at which point you open up this panel right here on the inside of this white panel and then close his leg up and that kind of fills in that gap there and then lock that back in place flip that gap out or that panel out and then this hole all this comes around you can rotate his shoulders into more of a forward position here. Yeah, whatever. When his chest comes down and tabs in, you want to get, again, behind these blue panels. Get the chest down to lock in like that. And here, now you can bring the arms, rotate them around on this hinge. I guess maybe they do sit back. I don't know. Wherever you feel like the shoulders should sit. Bring them back. Rotate the, uh, the bicep swivel in. 
and then rotate the fist just like that. That's how the arm should look. Wrong way. Nope. It has been a day here. Everything's going wrong with the server here at work. It's been a whole lot of fun. Anyway, so bring the arms in. Plug this back into its post. There we go. This piece comes up. You can see there's a little divot here to go behind this white square. Plug that in like that. Pull his face off because that's always fun. Actually, actually does have a funny little face hidden there behind his actual face. Slap this back on. Rotate his head around. There we go. And the backpack, these fold up to the inside here. And you see these little clips here clip into these grooves here on the backpack. Uh, just like this. And uh, again, adjust the shoulders. And there is the base robot in robot mode. Now, this is the official version. Uh, when you go to combine mode, you're supposed to pull the kneecaps up, and you can do it here in the small robot mode, flip these little kneecap panels up. Like I said, officially I think they're supposed to go down here, but uh, I like to have them up. And he comes with the, the katanas here. That kind of fit in his hands, he's got individual posable fingers, at least for, the, yeah, I think they're all individually posable. Uh, they're all one piece, but you can move each finger individually, and then the thumb. Getting these into the hand, so they kind of fit like that. You can get them in there, but you really got to kind of squeeze to get them in there. But he can hold his katanas in his hand, just like that. As well as the uh, the trailer itself comes with a small pistol here with, with an actual rotating chamber there that you can also put in his hand uh, if you wish. Uh -oh. Let's, the, the ports in his hand are just a little too small for these which is frustrating. Come on. He holds them very tight, but they do like to pop out. So there's the base, base robot by itself, and you can take the swords and you can kind of slide them down through here uh, to store in his backpack if you want. There's little slots here. I thought that was a slot for that. Oh, it's because I've got it facing the wrong way. With the blade facing in, it actually has a specialty slot to store the swords on his back. Posability, like I said, he's got this extendable neck here. Uh, pose, he's got ball joint shoulders, bicep swivel, uh, the shoulder armor can move. Uh, dual hinged elbows. He's got a uh, forearm swivel, a wrist swivel. And then if the wrist is on the ball joint there, you can see she can get him in a little bent pose as well. Individual fingers and thumb. He does have a waist swivel. Uh, ratcheting hips in both front and back direction. Ratcheting double jointed knees. They're jointed up here and then down in the boot itself. And the feet can rotate forward and back and side to side. So yeah, the core robot, if you can't afford the, the, uh, the whole armor trailer... The core robot itself is kind of neat. Um, I, I, I dig his robot mode. His car mode's a little lackluster without the trailer, but uh, his robot mode's actually pretty cool. You can open up his chest here to reveal the ancient amber, aka this little matrix, and it comes out. It has like a closed and open look to it, and it just pegs back in there, just like that. Now the fun part. So we'll go ahead and take these out of his hands. And we'll go to the trailer itself here, which opens up into an armored gantry. Um, first off, there's a giant sword up here. And if you ordered from Planet Steel Express, you also got a clear, like an orange sword as well. Uh, this one just came with this one. So yeah, you've got a master sword here with the matrix and the hilt. But then you just take this and you unpeg, unclip these side panels here. Open it up. Un un it slots in here, here, and then pegs here and here. So you kind of open this up and then grab this upper half of the front piece here. And this whole assembly lifts up. Comes back around. 
and down here. Yep, brought one of the foot panels with me. Put this back on here. So you bring this down and around. This piece flips up. This piece flips forward. And then this piece slides in here. You may have to adjust the upper hinges here. And there's little struts that come out here that attach inside here. You just kind of push in and then clip in down here to hold it steady. And then this whole gantry opens up to reveal his armor. See, there's the, the sides, the wings, the chest piece. The, uh, the helmet's on a little support strut here, as is the, the crotch piece, the boots, the feet. Now, when I first saw this originally, like, and the boots are on movable armatures here, but they, have, they like to pop off if you open them up. Originally, I thought the way this was supposed to work is that you could take this, take the small robot, put it in this thing, and have the gantry lower everything onto him. And unfortunately, that's not the case. Um, you do have to pull all the armor pieces out of there to get them on there. It would have been way cooler if it all lowered onto him and attached around, but uh, but no. So to start off the armor up process, go ahead and pull the boots off of here. Or no, actually, not the, the actual feet panels, foot panels. And these peg on to his feet. You can see there's a rectangular tab in the middle. They plug in right here. Just like that. Kind of put his arms up in a power armor pose. So yeah, there's the feet. Uh, the boots here unclip from these blue panels here. And then you open up the back. And then you slide it in over his leg. And then close it up on the back. Should all lock together to give him his giant boots. And again, we'll do the same for this one. Open it up. Line it in, you'll, you'll have the tabs lined up here on his leg. But yeah, just kind of get it all lined up and then clip it into place. So now his legs are all armored up. You want to make sure the knee panels are up for this point. They, these won't fit on with the kneecaps folded down. Uh, unclip this little waist piece here from this strut. And it plagues on right here in the front of his, his crotch. Uh, these little missile launchers right here come off and attach to the back of his legs. There's two peg holes here, or two pegs here and two peg holes on the back of his leg. So you just line those up and stick them on. All right, arm panels. Uh, these just clip on right over his smaller fists, just like that. See, there's a peg, blue peg right here that pegs into his arm here. There we go. Now the instructions don't mention these, but these are his forearm guards. These come in and these clip on right here. Just like that. These shoulder panels up here come off. Again, two pegs inside there that peg on to the shoulder pieces. And then, once that's done, you open up these side hinges here on this. Lift this panel up. This whole assembly unpegs from the back here. You might want to help push the helmet up a little bit more. Um, you see, there's four, peg, there's four pegs here, and the peg holes on the back. And then this whole assembly comes down over his head and under his arms, over the backpack. And then you close this down over his chest. 
Oh, um, it's not sitting down all the way. Why is that not happening? And then you bring the hinges around and clip it together. It should clip down. There we go. Clip it all the way down and then clip these under panels back on. And once that's done, take the helmet off, slide it over his head. You want to pull his head up as far as it can go on this little joint so you can see it. So it's not hidden. And then put the mask over his head. Come on. There we go, like that. And there he is, all armored up. It's still looking like his head is not visible, but it is. Just come up. There we go. Make sure that whole there we go. Make sure his whole head assembly is lifted all the way up. And then you shouldn't have any problem seeing his mask in the armor. Alright, hoping this is the home stretch. So yeah, here he is all armored up, and the gantry itself just stands by itself over here. Uh, you can set it off to the side. It's just a nice framework once all the armor is attached. <coughs> Excuse me. But the figure itself, now here he is all armored up. He's much larger. Uh Classics comparison size, just real quick. I don't have a whole lot of stuff to use here. I'm trying to get all this done. I've got too much to do today. Um, so yeah, just to give you an idea of how big he is. He's not quite as huge as I expected. But he's still got the, the poseable head. All of his articulation remains the same. He's got the same articulation points. The, uh, the waist piece has moving panels to let those get out of the way. He's really not all that hindered from all the armor. And of course, the wings are... Um, can hinge this way they hinge up here as well as they hinge right here at the backpack and then up here and you can open them up and spread them it's very impressive looking but I, like i said um i've lost my train of thought because i keep getting distracted but so you can get him a really impressive wingspan and he looks really cool um it's just a shame that like it may be a little pricey to get him but uh I do like it. I, I do wish the gantry had worked in a way where it actually armored him up instead of having to remove the pieces. You can hear my voice going. Um, but he can hold the Master Sword in his now orange fingertips. Um, he can hold the small katanas as well. And I, I'm finding I'm not having as many fit problems with these hands as I am with the smaller robot hands. And he can also hold his um, small pistol. I wonder if he can still store these swords. It looks like you can. It looks like you can, in fact, still store his uh, katana swords in his backpack even when he's got all the armor on. That's kind of cool. It looks a little silly with those blades sticking up behind his head, but you can store them on his back even when he's all armored up. Yeah, a really nice color scheme. I like the blues and oranges. Um, the more I mess with them, the more I like them. Uh, I, 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 I don't know if it beats Hypernova for Make Toys in my mind, because that was a really cool figure. But uh, this is a nice little reformatted Nova Prime from Mastermind Creations. So there it is, MMC Seraphicus Prominion from Mastermind Creations. With the core robot and the, uh, the battle gantry.